Hey everybody, welcome to day 30. We've made it halfway through form and function. Today we have chest and triceps. We're gonna be on a timer. Um, if you can have one heavy dumbbell, that would be great. We only have one weighted set for most of us. Some of us might need some alternates with weights. I'd really like to try to stay as much with the body weight sets that are body weight. So I'll give you some alternates there as well. And then we're also going to be using a band today. So I have um, not as tight of a tension band as we use for the legs, something just a little bit less. Um, if you don't have different options, grab what you do have. You can also hold a towel and that will still give a lot of pressure. Holding tension on the towel or an old t-shirt will work just fine. I'm gonna run us through everything that we're gonna do, then we'll get started. So as I'm going along, you can do it with me, uh, just without weight, well, a lot of it's without weight anyway, um, or kind of a modified version just to get yourself set up. Otherwise, I'm gonna have you go through some cat cow, um, also some bird dog, and gear up for those shoulders, your chest, your triceps along the way. Okay, so we're gonna start off with some core as we love to do. We're gonna be on a 30 second timer with no transition time for core. We're gonna go three rounds of two exercises. Pull the belly, scoop it tight, push your low back into the ground, and then you're gonna do a runner sit up. So we're gonna go 30 seconds with a runner, and then you're gonna go 30 seconds with a heel press, pushing the heels just straight up. Then we'll go back to the runner. If you do not do a sit up with your head off the ground, I know it doesn't work for some people with their neck and shoulders, you're gonna go into a dead bug. So your head's gonna stay supported on the ground. If the heel press is tough for you, or if you feel like it's getting into the low back, I want you to just hold the legs. And you might be tight in the hamstrings, so maybe you can't get your legs all the way up. So push that low back into the ground, flex across the core, finding the flexion deeper into the lower portion of your abdominals. So between your pubic bone, and belly button, that's where we're wanting to tighten. You can tap it, touch it, find it, try to locate it, and then that's what we're gonna be doing there. So if your legs are a little bit bent, that's no problem. You can still find awareness and flexion through that low belly. So we're gonna go three rounds of that. Then we're gonna move into a timer with transition time. I have 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds of transition. So I'm anticipating that I'm gonna need to also take breaks within my 30 seconds um and that's totally fine so we're just here to try to develop the moves and get everything that we can out of it without worrying how many we can do within our 30 seconds um, slower more focused and contracted moves are going to be way better and aren't going to be jacking our neck up and low back and everything else as well or the shoulders so we're going to start off with a tricep push-up um, you can be on your knees, you can be off your knees, and then I'll show you some other elevated positions. So you're gonna start with your plank position. You need your shoulders really up high over your fingertips. So nice and high, elbows squeeze in tight. You're gonna drop and press, focusing on that core. So don't worry if you don't get super far. If the elbows are just squeezing in, that's the biggest thing I want. You can definitely stay on your knees. There's a good possibility, good probability. I'm gonna be hitting there. Another way to start to develop your tricep push-up is to drop on your toes and come up on your knees. Again, the biggest thing is your core. So if you've been doing this series with us, I'm kind of this way with burpees. I care more about what's going on in the form than I do about how many you get. Having a huge number, your body's gonna thank you and uh, you'll be able to keep going a lot longer. So if you'd like, you can trial this with me. You drop elbows, squeeze in on your toes, then drop your knees onto the ground and push up from your knees. Okay, you can also use an elevated position, a box, a chair, a bench, a table. So getting that elevation will help to alleviate some of the weight of the body, right? So you would just, again, squeeze the elbows in and then push up from there. And then if that still doesn't work, I would love for you to try a wall push-up. So elbows again, squeeze in tight, just pull that body forward or let it drop, keeping that core tucked, that pelvis in the right position in neutral, elbows squeeze in tight. So I'd rather you do all that, any of those options, before you rather pick up a weight and do a kickback, but that's an option. So you'd hinge forward, elbows are up, and you kick back, 
getting into your triceps. Okay, after that, we're gonna go into dips. So we'll grab the box and elbows will squeeze in tight. Chest stays up nice and far. And then you're gonna go just a drop and a press. Those hips underneath the shoulders and you only go into the range that you feel comfortable with for that shoulder. All right, elbows squeeze really tight together. If that doesn't work for you because of, you know, your shoulders, sometimes it's not a good idea if you've had, you know, limitations or restrictions on your shoulders, surgery, whatever, it can get really tight in the shoulders. So again, feel free to do your kickbacks as an alternate. So getting into those triceps. Next up, we're going to do a skull crusher. Yes, it is tricep, tricep, tricep. And I'm aware of that. So <laughs> we're just going to do the best we can with it. I'm challenging my weight today for a skull crusher. I'm going to go 25 pounds, holding a glute bridge. Your arms come up. Elbows stay right on top of your shoulder, squeezing in tight. And then you drop the weight slow right to your hairline so that your elbows are right on top of your shoulders. All right, so there we go, triceps, lots of triceps. Next, we're gonna flip around and hit up push-ups. So just your regular push-up, standard push-up, hands will be a little bit wider, back into that core. Elbows squeeze back at an angle just a bit. So they're not right on the rib cage like our tricep push-ups, but I wanna make sure they're not super duper wide either. Just kind of spread them, you know, pinch them back. I would rather you stay on your toes and not worry about your range but if you need to hit the knees, that's totally fine. Keep the core engaged. And then the same thing with an elevated box or the wall, just hands will come wider. That same positioning with the elbows dropping back and then pushing out, okay? So there's a little bit of chest for us. Then we're gonna go to a prone snow angel. So prone means you're lying on your stomach. Okay, we're gonna bring our hands out in front. And then we're just gonna fly the arms back and then forward. So just giving the chest a second to open up and that squeeze between the shoulder blades. Okay, core will stay strong, chin stays tucked. As your arms come back by your hips, get just a little bit more lift in the upper back. Okay, we have to have that upper back stability um, in order to keep the shoulders happy and uh, work the chest efficiently without any injuries. Okay, next up we're gonna do our banded chest press. If you do not have a band, then I'm gonna have you just use your weights. That's totally fine, or the towel. Actually, I'd prefer you use a towel than grab weights because it just puts tension on the arms and chest a little bit different. So put tension on your hands, pull them as wide as you can, and then you drop your elbows in, and then push up, drop, and then press. You're trying to keep tension on that band the whole time. You'll feel the back brace a little bit more, should feel the back brace a little bit more, and then roll those shoulders back and down. Okay, then we're gonna finish off with a fun little finisher item. Um, we're gonna do a crane. So this is a yoga pose. It'll get back into our core. It's also gonna build stability into the back and the triceps. Spread your fingertips nice and wide. You're gonna come up onto your toes and find a position where your knees are gonna be on the outer edge of those triceps. And then you're just gonna to have to play around with your own body mechanics and coordination. Pull one toe up at a time. So right toe lifts and then your left toe. And then we're gonna to try to see if we can hold it for that 30 seconds. All right, otherwise, come down, shake it off and come back. If the crane isn't gonna work for you, I would like for you to go into a cat cow. So inhale, pushing your chest forward, and then exhale and round. This is still work. This is still super good to keep the body going, keep that motion right where we need it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get an official warm up, and then we're gonna get started. Three rounds through our typical, typical three rounds. Uh, come to those hands and knees. Put your right hand behind your head. We're going to work through that thoracic twist, opening the chest, getting some movement into the back. Find your shoulder blade to roll back and down. Super important when we're doing pushes, 
any sort of push up or chest press, we need to still be able to keep that shoulder blade, okay, switch to the other side, roll back and tucked in. As far as a functionality, so we've been talking about function, how we function in our daily lives and the things that we're doing on the mat or in our workouts to help us there. We don't do a lot of things in life where we need to push with a lot of force. Maybe slamming your car door if you're angry. <laughs> All right, come up into your downward facing dog. Push your chest back toward the thighs, slide the shoulder blades down. So we really want to make sure that we keep those shoulder heads back because the stability of the upper back is really much more important than building super massive pectorals. All right, take your right hand and just slide it back to your left ankle. Hold on a second, take a couple deep breaths. Try to keep those hips level, belly strong, and then let's switch. Left hand outside that right ankle, side shoulder down, belly strong. All right. I think we need to go ahead and get started. So we're going to go into our runner sit up and heel press or your alternate, which is your bird dog and low belly hold. Okay, ready, set, and go. Opposite knee to elbow. More than your pace. Focus on form. Use the belly to lift and to lower. And then get into that oblique and your lat a little bit on the twist. Check in with those arms and make sure that you're not throwing them around, but they're tucked in tight and you're using the core to lift and lower. Okay, there's our time. Put the legs up. We're going to go with that heel press. Focus on that low belly contraction. So we're not pulling the legs up or back or using momentum, just finding that low belly contraction. Five, four, three, two, and back to our runner. Scoop that belly, push low back into the ground. Envision that you're rolling down and rolling up one vertebra at a time. And I know it's tough. Our low back has a natural sway that we want. That's healthy and good and important. But you kind of have to push against that. And you can, okay, heel press when you're hitting up your crunches. I used to have a pretty good womp when I would lower back down. But I just kept working on it. Fighting for range, you build the strength to be able to get that scoop and work where you want it. Low belly, find the low belly. Don't rely on the move to get the heat. You flex first. Okay, last round, runner sit up. As you fatigue, it's going to get harder to keep that scoop, to do it right, keep working for it. As you lower down, make sure you don't relax. And time, heel press. Feel that low belly. 10 seconds to go. Three, two, and one. Whew. All right. Good job. I got that core wake up. Definitely feel the heat there. Plant your hands, fingertips towards your hips. Open the chest. All right. And then we're going to go to our other timer with transition time. So we're gonna start off with those tricep push-ups. Do your best, whatever alternate you want, if you wanna find a ledge, a wall, or you can hit up those kickbacks. All right, ready, set, and go. Elbows squeeze in tight, 
We're not here for a ton of reps. I'd rather you focus on form. Get your full push to the top. So a lot of times, especially the guys, hang out at the bottom and just pop, 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 pop. Get your full range of motion all the way down if you can, and then all the way up. Three, two, and one. Whew, okay, dips are next. If you're not able to do the dip, remember you can hit up your kickbacks. Ready, set, and go. Again, focus on feeling the triceps while keeping everything else in the right position. Chest up, belly strong, shoulders back. Time. All right, now we're gonna hit up those skull crushers. So on your back, drive your booty up, set your elbows right on top of your shoulders. So depending on your weight selection, you might be rolling a little faster than me and that's great, no worries. If I was holding a 10 pound weight, could definitely charge a little faster and there's benefits to both. Benefits to heavy and slow, lighter and faster. Stay locked through the core and time. All right, we're gonna go back to our push-ups, focusing more on the chest this time. Again, go for nice big range of motion. Ready, set, and go. Lock the core. Find your chest. Stay braced through the back. Space between your ears and the shoulders. And time. All right, take a little stretch. We're gonna do our prone angel. Then our band push. Okay. Lie on your belly. Core stays strong. Arms up in front. And then squeeze back. Again, it's your own self flexion. It's going to take you places. Training the body to set in the right position by using your muscles, your strength, support through the core and the back, time. Okay, back on your back, grab your band or your towel. Drive those hips up, tension on your band. So I'm pulling kind of right at my high ribs. And here I'm really checking in with those shoulder heads. Roll back and down. Brace through the core. Find the support of the back. And time. All right, now we're going to have our crane. Set up your hands nice and wide. We won't even worry about getting into it until the timer hits. Okay, so there you go. You're in your cat cow. Spread your fingertips. Hinge it forward one knee at a time. Definitely gets tougher as you get sweaty. Knees are going to slide a little. It's okay. Hold on to the core, find your core. If you need to drop back, fine. Come back, great, oh, there's our time. Okay, 
So we're going to be back on the ground for our tricep push-up. Elbows are going to squeeze in tight. Ready, set, and go. Take your time. Keep your form. Make sure you don't lose your core. So if you need to drop on your toes, come up on your knees, that's fine. Time. Oh, phew. Okay, get your box ready for your dips. And go. Burn is definitely different. Intensity. It's just in focusing on muscle groups. So good for you to focus, slow down. Pay attention to each part of the move. Chest up, belly strong, two seconds. All right. Back into your skull crushers. Then we'll be in our regular push-ups. Elbows squeeze in tight. Space between ears and shoulders. Check in with your back. Slide those shoulder blades down the spine. It's called retraction. Stability in that upper back and core. We need it. Time. All right. Get a little stretch. We're going to get our regular standard push-ups. Ready and go. Don't forget about the core. Should be tougher. Building that fatigue. Time. All right, lie on your belly. We're going to get our prone angels. Arms out in front, tuck your tailbone, flex the core, slide them around. So arms come back, rotate, find those shoulder heads rotating back, chest opens, but your chin stays still so your neck is long and neutral. time. All right, we're going to be on our band. Back into your glute bridge. Tension on the band. Slide it down and then press it up. If you can find your own self-flexion and self-resistance, think about how much more you're getting out of every single rep when you add weight. Or if you find yourself on vacation or without weights, recognizing you can still keep the body going. Okay, time without dumbbells and such. It's great. Whew, okay. We're gonna do our crane or your cat cow. So set your hands nice and wide, fingertips nice and wide. This is definitely tricep as well. You have to set those triceps back. Okay. 
Find your core. And time. All right. We're going back one last round. Tricep push ups are first. Big spread open fingertips. Elbows are going to squeeze in tight. See what you got. Check in, see if you can recruit a little help from the core and back. Keep those shoulder heads, hold back, elbows squeezed in tight, core strong, time. Okay, dips. Here you go. Chest up, core strong. Make sure your hips are running right along your bench or chair. Hold on to your core. Wow. Shoulders pull back. Press through those triceps. Watch it at the top, but the <laughs> butt doesn't push away. Woo, shaky arms, shaky arms. All right, skull crushers. Elbows in. Weight to the forehead. What do you feel, both directions? As the weight's coming down to the forehead, that's where you're building more muscle. It's elongating the eccentric move. Whew. All right, push-ups. Shoo! Three, two, here we go. Not getting as deep, just get what you can. Focus that core. Make sure you don't lose your low back. <laughs> Push-ups haven't been that hard for a long time. Okay, we have our prone angel. <clears throat> Belly strong. Arms should be shaking. Tuck that chin. Oh, yeah. Fly away. Core still strong. Tailbone tucked. Check in with those shoulders. So as your arms come forward, especially those shoulder heads are going to want to Creep up to the ears. Keep them rolled back. Okay, we're going to get that band push and then our crane. Find your glute bridge. It's easy. You're not flexing enough. You're not pushing tight enough against that band. Both directions. Don't let it come back together. Brace in through the back and then push through that chest. Time. All right. Here we go. Find your stance. Spread open fingertips. Uh, 
one leg at a time. Doesn't feel like I wiped it all. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Whew. good work. Nice job. Okay. Lie on your belly again. I hope your arms are as shaky as mine. Chest, triceps. Okay, grab your hands behind the back or you can use a towel or strap. And then lift your chest and push your knuckles back towards your heels. So open that chest, move your head around a bit. And then release, put your right arm out. We're gonna do our scorpion stretch. Okay, so your right arm is out, away from you on the ground. The palm is down. You have a 90 degree angle in your armpit. Bend your leg, your left leg. Push your heel up, then Roll the leg over the right side of the body until you can get the foot, the sole of your foot on the ground. And that knee is opening away from the body. So I feel my bicep, my shoulder, my chest, and my low back getting a pull here. Should feel good though. Feel good. If it doesn't feel good, back out of it. All right, roll back to the ground. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Ooh. Okay, left arm out. Bend your right knee. Push the heel up toward the sky. So your quad's lifting up off the mat. Then rotate over that left arm. Plant your right foot on the ground. I've had really good feedback. You all are figuring how to connect to different muscles. It's a total game changer when you can recruit the muscles you want. When you have that much mental connection to muscle activation. All right, roll back down. Ooh, go into your child's pose. Just think about everything that you can do and safely. All right, when you can recruit the back, put your hands together. Forehead on the ground and then pull your thumbs behind so that they're reaching down your spine. Walk your elbows forward a little more and then reach. I think it also really helps build better tone when you can mentally recruit specific muscles. You work what you really want to work. That's super good. All right, release there. We're going to hit um, our book stretch, the book opener. So lie on your left side and stack your knees and stack your hands. Hopefully you can rest your head. If not, find a pillow or something to raise the mat up. Okay, so rest your hands on top of one another. And then I want you to take your top hand and turn it so that the thumb's on the ground. And you're going to keep scraping that thumb on the ground until you get to about right overhead. So my arm's almost extended over the shoulder. And then you start opening the arm even more, or the palm, from your shoulder. So my palm's facing the ceiling. And you're going to let your shoulders lie flat onto the ground. You can feel that chest stretch, super good for the shoulder. Take your arm up and behind exactly the way you got where you're going here. And plant. Okay, let's do the other side. Stack your hands. Rest your head. Scrape your hand, thumb on the ground. 
Reach now as you go overhead, the palm is opening. So the palm faces the ceiling. Oh, it's so good. And then stretch across, let the chest open. Make sure you're staying relaxed in the neck, always relaxed in the neck. We need our traps to help support, but they're generally strong. <laughs> Working fine through all of the tense moments we have throughout the day. Okay, reach that arm back and around. Same way you got there. Perfect. Okay, lie on your back. Legs straight out in front of you. Reach your arms way up overhead. Take a nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, we're gonna bring our arms forward and reach over the legs. So the longer you can keep your arms up by your ears, the more work you have to do. But if you wanna keep your arms down low, bring them forward, that's totally fine. And then just reach forward over those legs. If you have a strap or a towel, grab that if you need the help. You should be progressing, you should be finding areas of improvement, whether it's how long you can hold a plank, and it's not gonna be massive. We're not looking at having lost four sizes or tons of poundage or reaching past your toes if 30 days ago you were here but just a little bit closer. Are you getting closer? Were your hands mid shin and now they're at the ankle? Do you feel like you can hold your plank longer and feel more core and less shoulders? All that sort of thing. Are you a little less freaked out when we have a hit day? Your cardio can catch up, heart rate is working well. Are you sleeping better? Do you have more energy? Any of those things come into your low squat. Those are all positive progressions, even your mood. There's so many things going on underneath that we don't even see. I guarantee they're there. <clears throat> They've been scientifically studied and peer reviewed, but you should also be able to see things and recognize things topically. So keep up the good work. Congratulations to getting halfway through. I'm looking forward to our next set of 30 days.